Hi everyone, and I hope you already had a great day and enjoyed all your talks you had looking at today, and welcome to the last talk of today. This is Livio, and my name is Fabian, and we will talk about the perils and pitfalls of multi-tenancy identity infrastructure. In the next 30 minutes, we will talk about why we think this topic is relevant and you should know about it, what the perils and pitfalls are of multi-tenancy identity infrastructure. Of course, we come up with some examples we have seen in practice and architectures that you can use to resolve those problems, and then we will answer your questions. I want to start with a question. How does this look to you? It looks great, yeah? <laughs> Terrifying. <laughs> so, it looks like a login, a pretty simple login. You could say it's two input fields and a button. How hard can this be? And I have to say, this is a quote we got from a developer which was not into identity management and authentication. And I was like wondering how could he not get what it is about? And this is what I want to show you now. So actually, this simple login UI is just the tip of the iceberg. If you look a little bit closer, there's way more to it than just these two input fields and the button. If you're looking at the features, you're starting with your application, you integrate authentication, you have username and password, then pretty fast you get the questions, do you have some multi-factor? And already on the multi-factor side, you do have lots of different components like SMS code, email code, authenticator apps. Then you switch over to passwordless um, authentication like face recognition, finger scan, whatever your device has to offer. After that, we continue with identity brokering. You want to use your social logins like Google, Apple, or Facebook accounts that you already have. So you don't have to use again another account where you need to remember your password. Next on, you want to manage some security settings, like how long should a password be? Do I even want to have a password? Do I want to enforce multi-factor? All those features you need somehow in your login. On top of that, there is some security stuff like pen testing. You want to ensure that your identities are secure and your data doesn't get stolen, so you want to have regular pen testing where you can prove that everything is fine with your system. And then there are some standards. We do have different standards on um, how to exchange users between systems, for example, the scheme standard, and then some authentication standards like SAML, OAuth, or OpenID Connect. Uh, the RFC of OAuth 2.0 itself has 75 pages, and then on top of that, OIDC has 44 pages. So that's already a lot. And then there in the corner, you do have the certifications. As soon as you start with your application, the first customer probably asks for ISO certification or SOC 2. And you have to prove that everything works fine in your system. Also, the OIDC um, standard can be certified, and I can assure you that lots of identity management systems which do have the OIDC standard are not fully compliant. So as soon as you want to integrate, you get to see where they have their little edges and where they differ from each other. Now we want to have a look what this means for multi-tenancy. It just adds more of it. We started with the whole system only for one tenant, and now we do have that end times. Each customer who does come into your system and you want to give them somehow the user management, the authentication, and the login, does need all of those configurations, all of that features, and all of those standards. With the complexity of your application, also the complexity of the identity infrastructure does grow and add some more complexity. 
Mostly at the beginning when you start with your application, you're not aware of that because first customer just tells you they need username and password and then the second comes around and tells you, okay, but I need password less or multi-factor. And then the third one doesn't even want to have new local users, they just want to bring the users they already have in an Entra ID or in their Google business account. Then they already have some existing landscapes, for example, Atlassian, HubSpot, or an SAP, where they already have users, user data. They don't want to manage everything everywhere. So you need to integrate somewhere in that systems, and you don't know which customer brings what around. So you need to be able to just integrate everything. So what does this mean to you? You need to be able to configure all those systems for each of those customers. You need to maintain it, and you probably need a lot of people, time, and know-how for that. We are still fine. We can manage that. I want to show you some examples to give a little bit backsight about how you, that could look in a, in a real-world scenario. Let's assume we have a web shop. You have some end consumers that use your web shop. They want to be able to log in, they want to be to able to store in their cart what they want to buy, and at the end, they want to do a checkout. Probably they don't want to do everything of that again the next time, so they just want to use the account again, so you need the user management and the authentication part. You might have business partners, which have different needs. They probably want to bring their Entra ID and be able to log in with that directly. And then you probably have your workforce. That's some part most people do not think when they start building with their application, that you do need to manage those users as well and the roles and the permissions, because they need to be able to manage all the the content of your web shop, be able to administrate everything. So you probably want to make sure that they are extra secure and enforce multi-factor. So my question, is this already multi-tenancy? Not sure. It could be both, I would say, because you can either manage that with some roles and, and permissions to tell which user is able to do what, but on the other hand, you might have different security settings, and then you could already put them into different tenants. We, an, we add, again, an additional layer. We are now the provider of a web shop application, so we want to give that web shop to different customers. We still have our tenants with all the users we had before, the workforce, the business partners, and the consumers, but now we have multiple of those. What does that mean for us to manage? First, we start probably with a different domain. So if I have Amazon as a web shop and I have Etsy as a web shop, I don't want to host them on the same domain. Also, I don't want to have the same branding for them. Would look pretty strange if Amazon does have uh, the same branding as Etsy, so we want to be able to configure that. Also, they probably have different social logins or different security settings, and maybe even the compliance um, they want to have is different with different certifications. I have an example from what we have experienced in the past. Let's assume you have a login flow with username on the first screen, next then a password um, field, and then after that some other checks. This probably makes sense to a lot of use cases because you want to identify which user it is first to then be able to check what to need, you need to do with that because if you need a password, then you ask that. If there is a social login behind that, you probably redirect to an external identity provider directly. But then what if a, a customer tells you they want to have both on the same screen? Somehow you need to be able to manage that and give the customers what they need. And with that, I want to hand over to Livio. Okay. Um. There are some questions you should ask yourself when dealing with authentication and multi-tenancy. 
One of which is how many levels of tenancy are needed for your use case? Are there just some multiple organizations? Are there multiple organizations within a tenant? Remember the web shop example? What scenario do you have? Is it pure B2C? Is it maybe B2B or even mixed cases? You might have different customizations per user groups. The workforce might need um, additional authentication methods, or you might require multi-factor authentication for them. Others might want to use social IDPs or passwordless. There might be different security policies and requirements, um, such as password complexity policies, expiration of passwords, different hashing algorithms, and also regulatory and compliance requirements might be different. You might need to be compliant with GDPR, SOC 2, ISO, um, whatever there is. And also, you obviously should ask yourself whether you need or want to self-host or rely on a cloud service. Let's look at an example. Um, we've, there uh, I have a healthcare example, but it could be anything. We just saw um, such examples in our experience with healthcare, for example, where the hashing requirements for passwords can be totally different from one tenant to another. One might need PBKDF2, another wants Argon2 to be used, Bcrypt, whatever. Um, that might come from regulations where they need to comply with. Others might just be completely wild ideas for you uh, when you have to integrate or be able to provide such options such as long-running user lifetimes for months or uh, yeah, years, for example. There might be different password policy configurations expirations, and different requirements to the audit trail. Let's also look at some protocol-specific um, differences. For example, OIDC, whoever uh, already integrated a customer or different customers using their existing entry ID uh, might have come across such problems. Um, typically in healthcare, a lot of customers already have an existing entry ID to federate or um, authenticate their users. They might already have existing integrations into other applications. And as many customers as you have, you probably have as many configurations and different requirements on what they want to federate uh, and provide such as different or additional user information, or they might even want to federate and retain the information of organizational groups into your application to use as a, an ARPAC model, where they want to grant their users based on their organizational groups. So the question really is, do you want to explain people each and every time that their policy is outdated or wrong? So for example, that they should probably use pass keys or some multi-factor authentication, even when they just want to use a simple username and password. Or uh, do you want to make your software complicated and, and just make money out of those deals by implementing each and every corner case? Or do you want to focus on getting really your product right and focus on your business case while still providing custom flexibility for the user and uh, the customers? and really focus on deals with company that are security aware and want to have uh, an audit and access lock by you. So
So let's look at how the architecture could look like. One option you would have is to ha run everything on a shared system. So one system having multiple tenants within their, their organizations and all their data would only be logically separated. They probably all run on the same region and this means configuration needs to be done on a tenant level. You need to be able to provide or have the configuration for each tenant individually as they might require different hashing algorithms and other configurations we've looked at before. On the other hand, you could also go with dedicated or yeah, dedicated systems where each tenant is run or on a separate system. So the data separation is really system-based then or tenant-based, which provides you the ability to run it on different regions or even different systems. One might be run on Google, another on AWS and so on. There are obviously pros and cons for each um, yeah, version of it. So shared system, since it's, um, you only need to run one infrastructure, this, obviously, this is obviously cost efficient and simplifies management. There's only one system to manage and you only need to update a single one. This also benefits uh, or leads to centralized security updates so all tenants can benefit at the same time. Additionally, if you need to set up a new tenant, this is much faster since the infrastructure is already in place. You just need to set up a new one, new tenant. Having a shared system obviously comes with cons as well. So because of the low isolation, there's a noisy neighbor problem. And also if there is potential security breach, all tenants might be uh, exposed. Also, you will face compliance challenges, challenges since you need to be able to achieve all those regulatory constraints of the different tenants on a single system. Also regarding performance, it probably be harder to achieve if multiple tenants use the same system and have high load at the same time. You can't just auto scale for a single tenant. Dedicated system on the other hand, as already mentioned, will have great isolation since every tenant has its own system. So you will benefit of enhanced security you isolate the, miss, the risk of uh, multi-tenant breaches. Also, obviously, compliance um, requirements are easier to address. And as well, customization, since every tenant can be managed on its own. All the offsettings, branding, and security settings. Again, since you probably run multiple dedicated system, it's uh, harder to manage or it re requires uh, additional workforce. You manage multiple ones, you have additional infrastructure cost, probably also additional personnel costs. But there's no single point of truth which benefits uh, or which system is for your use case best. You really have to choose or decide and check what your use case or your business case is and decide upon that. Let's quickly summarize. Identity and infrastructure is plumbing work. It's more than two input fields and a button. And as already mentioned in many keynotes and presentations today, things can and will break. Since 
also of an and authorization, authorization and authentication is a deep rabbit hole. Remember the iceberg, all those requirements, protocols, and certifications. And multi-tenancy just makes it harder. As always, remember the customer is king. They probably know why, or at least what they know, uh, what they need. You st should still guide them on what is security best practice, but in the end, be sure to provide the infrastructure so they can fulfill their requirements. And for sure, a proven record is in security is key for enterprise deals. Do regular pen tests and certifications will benefit. So our advice, obviously we're a little bit biased, um, use established frameworks, rely on OAuth, OADC, for example, and before you build your own product for authentication and authorization, rely on an existing one which uses those established frameworks. And with that said, thanks for all for uh, thank you all for your attention, and we are now ready for questions. <laughs>